Come take a look inside this amazing box as we take a look at the biggest Space Marine tank out there ever. The Mastodon is here. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear here today with our unboxing and review uh, rules roundup, I guess you could say, for the new Mastodon tank for uh, Warhammer 40k Space Marines. Of course, this is the biggest tank they've had. I mean, there's the Fellblade out there, but it's not nearly as big as this bad boy right here. Now, we had heard all sorts of rumors and seen pictures about this thing, and it had been delayed because Forge World just wanted to get it right, and you can't fault them there because, you know, good things take time, and I think we can all appreciate that. Now, I think with the conversion rate right now, in US dollars at least, this is about three, 390, not counting taxes. So, you know, generally if you're gonna get it here in the States, 10% sales tax, you're looking probably around $420 for this tank. It's an amazing piece of miniature engineering. Uh, obviously done on a computer. I was just blown away when I was reading the instruction booklet and looking at a lot of the pictures in here. Like this is, I mean, if you're gonna spend 250 bucks or whatever it is for a fell blade or for the glaive, you know, you might wanna start thinking about saving up that extra 150 and throwing it at the Mastodon because this, this is some serious business right here. And just the fact that it's a collector's piece and it can be opened up and you can like put your mans in it and you kind of have it sitting on the shelf. This thing, I, I can only imagine what the actual footprint will be, probably the whole box here. Now, I caused quite a stir today on the Spiky Bits Hobbies Facebook group because I put a picture up, I was like, hey, guess what's in the box? I was like, <laughs> two guesses, three guesses in the first two don't count. So obviously people were like, Mastodon or cats, which both were probably correct in some way or another because I'm sure a cat's gonna jump in this box at some point. <laughs> so uh, somebody was like, oh, I can't wait to see what uh, what somebody who, who gets this for, for uh, showing up at their door. Because yes, I'm not keeping this. I'm gonna do the unboxing video. I'm gonna do a tutorial for putting it together because I have to mess with it. And then I'm gonna send it out to one lucky Patreon next month that has, uh, that much uh, dollars coming to them in quarterly shipment so I'm sure there will be at least a few uh, folks out there that will be eligible for this bad boy so somebody's gonna get a big box at the door and it's probably not gonna be cats and or beer it's probably gonna be the Macedon so we're gonna take a closer look at this because this is probably gonna be a little a big video here because it is there's so much to go over. So first off, kudos to Forge World again, because my order came and it wasn't just this, it was a bunch of stuff. Some stuff came in bags, some stuff came in boxes. The stuff that came in bags was all like super bubble wrapped and all like super tight in the box, wedged in with packing pillows around boxes. So they're getting a lot better at shipping things. And especially when you have this big heavy box, which by the way, in box, this weighs seven pounds. So think about that for a minute. This tank, minus the box and minus all the like the big chunky sprue parts, could be probably around five pound, five pound tank, right? That's that's pretty nuts once you start thinking about it. So once you start getting in here and let's lay it all out. So you got like some boxes of the little hinge pieces and things, some of your weapon uh, pieces here, then your front hinge, your plates, your armor treading. Then it starts to get into the bigger assemblies because the floor is actually made up of three different pieces. And then you have this command deck uh, plate as well. More, oh, this is, this is how fresh this box is. It's like literally put together and, and things are, the bags are literally stuck to it. That's pretty crazy. So here's some uh, Coppola's and things to side sponsor weapons. We're gonna take a bigger look at all of this. And then the big daddy pieces are in here in the bottom and underneath some bubble wrap. So we'll pull those out separately as we uh, make our way to those. Actually, I might do, I'm actually gonna do this first because that's a lot of cool stuff to look at. The big chunks are always my fate. But let's take a look at this instruction manual here first, just so you get an idea and you can follow along with um, a lot of these parts here. Because I feel like that's the way to go. So first off, Mastodon tanks here, $300, uh, $90 roughly US. It does have the download section on their site, which we're gonna go over the rules there. It's 700 points if you're playing it in 40K. 
Here's the exploded view, which is pretty amazing to be quite honest. So it's got three separate bulkheads, not counting the outer and the super outer bulkhead assemblies. These, this is an assembly here, so you can do some different paint jobs and then glue it to here if you're looking to do that two-tone kind of paint job. All of these are actual assemblies. So the command deck goes together and goes onto this plate, which separates and can kind of pull out. Then you can pull out the front top fuselage to see the interior compartments as well. So basically everything that stays together is the left and right fuselage, all the doors and everything uh, hinge open left and left and right right here, down in the back. Um, and then you've got your different weapon uh, assemblies here. So you got that uh, huge ass anti-aircraft cannon. It also comes with crew right here, which is pretty neat too. When we start looking at it, it basically breaks, you know, breaks it down to you like you can build it in stages and then, uh, you know, if you're very careful with your hinging and everything and your gluing, then of course it will be able to be opened. You can open the front hinges very similar to the Land Raider does, but this kind of goes sideways. I'm not sure what that's called. I'm sure there's a technical term. I'm not a doorologist. I don't know. And then it's got this flip down ramp here in the back. So again, very cool stuff. And they give you specific directions, glue contact points, parts for assembly right here, basically where everything goes. So just kind of looking through and kind of taking taking it all in, you know, the, the front, the bottom plates here are three different plates and then you slide in the bulkheads. Everything looks very modular. It's just, it's it's done on a computer. You know, this is to be expected. So I imagine this kit is going to go together very easily once you get it all deflashed and everything. Front track links. I'll tell you what, I do not like individual links. I'm so glad Forge World does like uh, modular track sections now. It's just amazing. And these are all basically embedded into here as well. Got an optional platform for your Space Marine crew to stand on if you want. Then it gets into the top mounted weapons, which we'll find out because I actually haven't looked yet. Now I'm peeking over here and I see it. It looks like that's the same mount that can go on the back of a Rhino Razorback, but we won't know until I get it all together. And that of course is gonna be a separate video tutorial. Then here's the top weapon here, the Siege Melta Array Battery here. And remember, it's got two sets of sponsor weapons, the Heavy Flamer uh, Doodaddy in the front and the last cannon that we've all come to know known and love off the, both the Predators and the Sakaran that goes in the back. And boom, that's it. It's just 42 steps, no big deal. <laughs> I imagine it's a little bit more complicated than that, but but I like to think it isn't because I'd like to get this bad boy together Ricky tick. So here's an idea of how big this is. Obviously, I have average man size hands and it's uh, pretty much uh, big, big parts here. Big, big, big parts. I am not liking that right there. That's going to be a bitch to cut down, but we'll get to it. So there's that and the side sponsor to be expected. It's got nice little detail here. I mean, all the little nubs and everything, they spared no expense on all of that. Definitely looks very symmetrical, very well done. Getting in here, all the undercuts are great and there's a ton of undercuts, or I guess just cuts in general, just right in here, which look fantastic. They, this is a great mold here. They did all the, um, the facets and the, just basically to save space and material there. And then here's its counterpart. <laughs> Literally all they have to do is just hit a button and flip this thing and whatever. I guess they're using ZBrush. I'm not classically trained on ZBrush. They did a lot of work in uh, Katia and uh, Autodesk Inventor back in my tenure as a engineer -er man. And then the, here's the part that they basically lock into, which I guess judging by the profile would be a something like a dish. Something like a dish. It looks right. So there's something else that goes in the front there. Oh, the treads, of course. And then it gets into the actual, uh, where it flips open. And there's the interior detail as well on that. No interior detail here, very boring. Very, very boring. They got their own special little lockers. As you can imagine, this one is probably symmetrically the same. Yep, it definitely appears that way. Very cool. They literally just have to sculpt one and hit a button and boop. Well, I guess they did it a little bit different right here because of the ladder going up to the crew compartment, but still it's pretty much a cut and paste, uh, completely uh, reversed in, uh, piece right there. And then here's the top command, basically where that ladder leads to right there. All completely well done. Look at the detailing and everything. I mean, this definitely screams grimdark. And then they got the back hatch here, which comes down from the rear. And then this is where that back hatch will be roughly back here. So this is kind of, how this works and there's little buttress, a little buttress supports that go right over that. So you kind of get an idea here of how this goes together 
and then it kind of builds on the front right there and it's very modular and this actually locks into a flat plate which i didn't see i guess it's in a different i guess it's in, actually in a baggie so we'll see that here in a minute so let me arrange these carefully back in a box because i have literally cleared my schedule which is pretty awesome with the all of the support we've gotten from all the supporters over on Patreon, I'm able sometimes to react pretty quickly to the things that come in here and be able to, um, you know, jump on things. I knew when this was coming in, so very, very thankful that I have the time to work on this. Well, I'm just gonna put this in here, and hopefully, it is I'm very easy on it. Okay, so first bag up. It looks to be uh, the front siege doors right here, along with uh, some of the extra pieces that go on the side there. And I have my handy dandy a reference, little reference instruction manual here. We're gonna do these bag by bag just so I don't get them all confused. So here's those track sections that go right on the front. Obviously very well done as well, just like the rest. I mean, in there, lots of undercuts that are very well cast and all the little nubs and everything. Mold lines are actually a little bit to of the minimum there, which I am perfectly okay with. And then here's more of those. Because remember, it's a dual section that goes on the front right here. There's double treading. And then here's your doors and one of the top pieces right here. This actually goes over that the Melta array right in the front. Uh, here's a picture of it right there. And here is the pieces themselves for the door. Now this is all very slick and greasy because they've used that mold release. So always make sure you wash your parts. So there's how it locks together. And then the little pistons in the back basically push it forward like a reverse kind of eggshell kind of cracking type thing. And then these little um, power couplings or I guess canisters are also for multi-meltas in the front they are little recessed kind of murder hole uh, multi-meltas here and then here is the stacks of the light I actually don't know where those go I missed that part on it I don't see it right on the uh, that might be an interior thing I don't see it right on the top oh yeah it goes inside it goes right here right over top of the uh, little Space Marine lockers. Left internal lights, so they are lights. That's pretty cool. Yo, turn on, turn off your light, I'm trying to go to sleep over the sound of the engines. Just like, rest one side of my brain so I can, uh, you know, sleep for like two minutes at a time. That's my Space Marine voice, by the way. I hope you like it. I worked really hard on that one. <laughs> it's like a cross between, uh, I don't even know, <laughs> Arnold and the Jersey Shore. I don't, I don't know. I imagine when you get to be like nine feet tall, your your voice definitely deepens. All right, more parts, just like weapons and hinges and all sorts of fun accoutrement for uh, death and destruction here. So we've got the big uh, Melta Array piece, some hinges which go together. These are the insides of this right here, which lock right in and then I'm actually not sure. I guess you cut those down. A lot of times you cut them down to uh, order and then there's hmm, there's a lot of those and then there's the heavy flamer on the side little hatch on the back for the command section and what else what is this I don't know what this thing is this is probably the uh, the gun array yeah it's the gun piece that you mount everything to and more gun pieces ammo feeds ammo hoppers but no barrels so we don't like barrels F a barrel. So there's all that. I'm not sure what this is either. Oh, that's probably the, the mount. Yep, it's the mount. Boom, there's that. Pretty cool stuff there. Obviously very well detailed. I mean, you can tell what everything is. I don't see any miscasts. I mean, for something this thin, it's pretty amazing that they are able to do such a good job with it. In my opinion, there's the last cannon barrels. I'm loving it so far, man. This looks like a very exciting project. I cannot wait to put it together. Uh, I really... A little sad that I will not be keeping it because I'm sure the Iron Warriors wouldn't mind getting their hands on one of these bad boys. Currently in our Iron Warrior in, uh, arsenal right now, we have a uh, Shadow Sword. That's uh, that's where we get. That's where we're at right now. I guess we could even say it's uh, a Perturabo's personal Shadow Sword. I haven't haven't checked to see if it's uh, loaded out the same way as his, but we could always check that out at our next convenience time to check those things out so a lot of mounts here there's a the void shield generators more what is this oh this is part of the barrels for the anti-aircraft cannon here's the little mounts and power uh, power couplings 
for the uh, uh, the last cannons, more piston pieces, crew of course, uh, the ends of the barrels for the anti-aircraft gun, here's the mounts uh, for the last cannons, now here's more mounts, these look to be hinges, these look like to be the hinges for the inside doors, sensors for everything, more crew, that's where you get that little optional platform doodad thingy. Yeah, these are the interior hinges. These look like what the bottoms of the hinges where the pistons go. This I actually have no idea, nor is it probably important right now. So we'll just skip it. It doesn't exist. And there are more parts to the uh, sponsors. Remember, there's two sets of sponsors, the Heavy Flamer and uh, the Last Cannon as well. So, you know, I'm really liking how Forge World has shifted and basically 3D designs everything right down to, you know, the actual little sprue pieces that everything is mounted on which is kind of super cool like that they've really come that far uh in such a short amount of time next up looks to be more just general armor plating it looks like nothing too exciting here which is kind of sad because we like exciting we like big tanks we like big titans we like exciting but no nothing to more interior lights armor plates for the sponsons right here here's hatches for the two top pieces, more sponsoring pieces here where those little uh, sockets go into that I just showed you on the other part. These are those buttresses that go right over top of right here. Um, this looks to be interior hatch pieces, more buttresses, shoulder pads. There's that little optional stand uh, for the crewman inside. I don't know what these go to, nor do I venture a guess. There's the multi melters that go in the door, the recessed murder, murder multi melters as I like to call it, and Space Marine Crew Fingers, obviously telling the pilot to drive him closer because he wants to shoot things with his multi gun array. <laughs> drive me closer! We're not close enough yet! We need to melt the things and open hatches and assault for great glory. Like, the rules are actually pretty decent on this. Like, will you see it in every game? Nah, probably not. But I tell you what, if I had one of these, I would almost use it as like a Space Marine carrying case. <laughs> like, yo, my army's in here. It's got like 40 dudes. Dude, this is cool. Oh, I got a couple of dreadnoughts too. No big deal. And just like, just like move it up on the, <laughs> move it up on the tabletop. Be like, yo, where's the army? Oh, it's inside there. <laughs> just like open it up and pull your little mans out. And they do, 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 do. Oh, that'd be so hilarious. All right, and here's the bigger, the last of the. Last of the parts, the bigger chunks, there's that command deck that they mount. This would be uh, face down. So you would mount those two assemblies that we saw a second ago. Oh, that's actually got a nice little recess for that. Look at that. Boom. It's like it was meant to be like a glove. Tight like a tiger. There we go. And this little bad boy right there also recessed. I'm digging it. I am digging it. So that way you keep it all together as a big... Um, has a big assembly there and that's probably about an eighth of an inch thick so I could definitely see that doing the Lord's work here's an uh, interior bulkhead very similar to what we've seen in the Titans in the past but a little bit more refined with that sweet computer technology uh, bottom bulkhead rear hatch which wow that is that's a chunk right there that is literally the size of a rhino the hatch for the Mastodon is the size of a rhino that's just that makes me giggle on the inside. I don't know why, it just does, it tickles me. I like this bottom piece right here, this bottom bulkhead piece where it starts to flare up a little bit because it's got like little bottom access panels, kind of like inside a ship, there's a bilge kind of type deal. It wouldn't necessarily be that, but it looks similar to this in some in some cases. And then there's the other bulkhead. So they can, it looked like on the instruction manuals that these things, yeah, there's a little slide right there. So you're gonna have to get all of the, uh, the little extra fill gates right there off. But it looked like these things all slot together. Yeah, that's what it looks like. And then this piece might actually lock into something else. I'm not sure how it goes, but we will check the instructions before we start gluing things together. And then the other bulkhead right there, which looks eerily similar to this one. Hmm. Very, very similar. The buttons layout's the same. The light, the interior light's the same. They have like the biggest lights in uh, in the Grimdark, because if you think about it, that is literally bigger than a Space Marine's head. And I know those guys have pretty big heads because they like to walk around without their helmets on. So that's pretty neat to see. And then there is the front piece that recesses down. 
and you put the melt array in there and that's your front piece. And this is also removable because when it's not locked in to this piece here, which looks to be something like, it would probably go something like this, and then you can pull this off, and then you pull that off, and then you can see the underneath. And then of course you can squeaky squeaky your gates open and flippy flippy down your back hatch as well. So pretty neat stuff right here. I mean, that's, <laughs> like look at all those cables. It reminds me of a uh, uh, Atom Smasher actually. It looks very similar to something like that. I don't know what that says for, uh, from Elta technology on a much, 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 much smaller scale, but that's actually surprisingly similar. Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. That looks like some Atom power feeds. Interesting. Hmm. I wonder what that means. I wonder if GW knows something we don't know. Anywho, so that was all of the parts there. So I'm going to rebag this and we're going to talk a little bit about the, the rules for this bad boy because let's face it, it's ginormous and totally awesome looking and I am just <sighs> so excited to have this thing. Words cannot describe how excited I am to work on this thing. Or at least get it together and then send it to somebody because it'll be fun. All right, so, oh, here's the rules right here. So 700 points is two pages worth of rules. Now Forge World started doing this thing where uh, there's a little downloads tab on uh, you know, on a product. So if you're uh, in question whether the rules are there or not, a lot of times you can find them right on the product page. So it's 700 points, um, ballistic skill four, which is great. And I think you can buy the command. Can you buy the commander? Spencer commander upgrade? No, that's 30K, duh. So you got that 14, 14, 14 rear, 10 whole points. Wow, that's pretty massive. Then it also has a fixed forward siege melter array, which we already saw there. Two sponsor mounted heavy flamers, as well as last cans, which we also saw. The Sky Reaper battery, which profile is right here. Uh, the smoke launchers, searchlight, armored ceramite, because so what's Melta gonna do against something like this? Now, it is a super heavy vehicle, so you know, there's uh, all sorts of resiliencies there. Remember to allocate all your shots out at once before you start rolling. It's an assault vehicle, it has enhanced defensive fire, which helps you with overwatch. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, reinforced shell, void shields, and a relic of the armory. The Mastodon can carry 40 models, can also carry two dreadnoughts in the following type of, uh, in the following combination. Uh, Space Marine dreadnoughts, ironclad, Space Marine venable dreadnoughts, chaplains, blood angel furiosos, blood angel death company, librarian dreadnoughts, contemptor dreadnoughts, each dreadnought counts as 10 models respectively. Why the, I guess, dark angels can't get it. I guess space holes can't get it. That's just mean. That's just mean. Or Grey Knights. Well, I guess the Grey Knights wouldn't get it anyways. Uh, the Mastodon has two access points, one at the front and rear, obviously. It's a super, oh, it can be upgraded as super heavy command tank for 20 points. It may also mount up to 400 killer missiles for five points each. Actually, for five points each, a 100 killer missile isn't that bad in theory. Uh, the Mastodon may exchange a Sky Reaper battery for a command of Vox Relay, which I guess would be just like the saucer dish that we've seen for those anti-aircraft. Um, little uh, tarantula uh, platforms, right? The Mastodon Assault Transport is a lower word choice for any detachment with Faction Space Marine, Blood Angel, Dark Angel, Space Wolf, or Grey Knights. Oh, I guess that's not, not why it's over here because they technically don't have a different type of Dreadnought, supposedly. Eh, whatever. Uh, when selected as part of Grey Knights, Relic of Army Special Rules ignored, but that vehicle may purchase upgrades other than those listed here. Okay, cool. Enhanced Defensive Fire, I guess we'll leave this all out here. We'll give you something. Give me some new, some new hotness to look at. Uh, the enhanced defensive fire is pretty cool because once you have, uh, if you have a unit inside it, it can overwatch with the sponsor mountain weapons when assaulted. So that's uh, these bad boys right here, the heavy flamer and the last cannon there. Uh, may be fired once per assault phase in an assaulting unit within the particular weapons arc of fire. Remember, they are sponsons. In the case of the last cannon, the Overwatch fire is carried out of Ballistic Seal 2. And in the case of the Heavy Flamers, D3 plus 1 automatic hits are inflicted on the assaulted unit that's firing upon. Uh, reinforced Shell Special Rule says that it's designed to withstand the withering punishment and endure and endure. Well, that makes sense. Um, the catastrophic, reduce the roll made on a catastrophic damage table by neg 2. If the result roll is actually zero or neg one after its modifier is taken into account, it does not explode, huh? But it instead becomes a broken shell. Wow, that's a lot, a lot of sock blocking terrain. Still counts as being destroyed for purposes of victory points. Any models transported inside suffer immediate strength four hit, no big deal. Vehicles are struck in their weakest armor value, which would be 10 for the dreadnoughts in a lot of cases. From this point onwards, its shell is treated as a ruined building rather than a vehicle wreck, and its two doorways count as being open access points to the interior. 
Huh, that's pretty interesting uh, rule set right there. So it's not only is line of sight blocking terrain for the most part, but you can actually embark inside it. The command box relay allows the controlling player to add plus one or subtract one from the results of reserve rolls that they make uh, when it's in play. Should the enemy model suffer a deep strike mishap while it's in play, then the roll suffers a neg one modifier. Oh, so now it's a 33% chance to uh, just straight up die. That's kind of cool. Void shields too. We all know how void shields work. Their armor value too. They go down. You can roll for them to get back up on a five up at the end of the end of each controlling player's turn. Um, Mastodon weapons, we got the Siege Melter Array, which is that big badass thing right there in the front, uh, which I guess technically it's an array because it's got these little ones on the side too, so I guess that's an all-inclusive kind of thing. Strength 9, AP 1, Heavy 4, Blast 3 inch, so it does the Lord's work at Strength 9. Uh, that'll get, that'll get some, some folks sleeping at 12 inch range, but then again, if you're that close to it, uh, and you're not intending on assaulting it, you have severely screwed something up somewhere along your battle plan, I feel like. Sky Reaper battery is 48 inch range, strength 7, AP 4, it's a heavy 5 Skyfire twin linked interceptor gun. Would like to see it have rending, but I feel like it's still pretty good when you're shooting against flyers in general. Uh, but it does have Skyfire, so... Uh, you know, I like it. I like it. I like it. Uh, stone burner when striking against buildings or fortifications, each penetrating hit inflicted becomes D3 penetrating hits. So, uh, yeah, it's gonna knock those down pretty, pretty quick. So don't can't be hiding in bastions or bunkers uh, in front of this thing here. It'll, it'll do the Lord's work and then quite possibly roll over it <laughs> because it is ginormous. I cannot wait to get this thing together. Uh, we will be launching a uh, probably a, at least one tutorial on putting this thing together once I get it all trimmed up and everything. Um, I'm just excited about this project. It looks like a great tank and uh, I can't wait to get my hands on it and share it with you guys even more. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.